What does it mean to be a part of a church? Why are we a part of a faith community at Prince of Peace? These are great questions. The reality is people are a part of a church for a variety of reasons. Some people grew up going to church and their parents raised them in a church. And so it's what they just do. It's a part of their routine and their habit. Others come to church because they're hungry to learn more about God. And others come because they want to worship and praise God. As a faith leader, as a pastor of the community, I think it's really important that we um, give space for everyone's reasons for why they might be a part of the congregation, why they might be a part of the church. But for me, I like to start in a really foundational place with the question, Why does the church exist? What's the point of the Christian church, the community, and even our local congregation at Prince of Peace? And I think the place where we begin is with the sense of our mission and our vision. Our mission in life, our mission as the people of God, helps us understand what it is we're called to do every day. A mission is something that should be repeatable. It's repeatable actions that we can take, right? So your mission right now might be to finish the end of the school year. I've got to go through all my online classes and all of my Zoom classes, and my mission is to just get done. And so what that boils down to are things that you need to do every day in order to accomplish your mission. You need to go to your class. You need to do your homework. You need to finish that final product. A mission greatly informs what we do every single day. But we also need a vision in life. A vision is something that serves as our inspiration. It also draws out our deepest longing and desires of our heart, right? And it guides our action. It guides and informs the mission that we live out. Vision is the big picture of where we want to go in life. And mission are the daily actions, right? So a vision for your life might be that you want to live um, a happy life and you want to start your own business or you, you want to do something grand. You want to make a big impact in the world. That's the ultimate vision. It's the reason you get out of bed in the morning. It's what you're working towards. But you need a mission daily actions that help you move towards that hope for future. So the same is true when it comes to the church. Our mission at Prince of Peace is to live and love like Jesus. This is what we want to do every day of the week. We want to live like Jesus. We want to invest in relationships with God, with other people, and with the world. We want to love like Jesus. We're challenged to love everybody, not just the people that we like or we get along with. We want to love like Jesus by serving other people as Jesus served others. Our mission is what we focus on every single day, no matter what our circumstances are, whether we're adults and we're working or we're in school or we're on a sports team, help me live and love like Jesus. Help me to look like Christ this very day. But the church at Prince of Peace also is working towards a vision. This is what God wants for the whole world. And our vision at Prince of Peace is of a world restored with grace and peace. The world healed mended, put back together with grace and with peace. As we think about that, the vision, it should inspire us. It it should motivate us, right? It's a good vision is aspirational. It's something that we have to work towards. It's not something that we can do easily. It's something that's going to take a lot of our effort. And a good vision, it will attract resources and people. But it also draws out these deep longings and desires in our heart, right? A good vision will address something that is broken, something that is flawed. I don't need to point out all the ways that our world 
is broken right now. Obviously, there are viruses and there is sickness, but there's also hunger. Millions of children go to bed hungry every night around the world and even in our local community. There's broken relationships. People don't treat each other how they should be treated. There is inequality. There's injustice. The world is a broken place. People hurt other people. But a good vision will bring forth sacrifice in us. A good vision is something that we, we want to accomplish together, right? And so we're willing to give up something in order to work towards that better future. And a good vision also provides us with the strategic framework. It helps us evaluate decisions that we should make, right? When you know the vision for your life, where you want to go, what you want to do, how you want to live, well, it helps you then make decisions when options come your way. Should we do this or should we do that? Well, what is our vision? What is the purpose? Where do I want to go in life? Does this support that vision? Or does it work against it, right? Vision always has to come first. So a world restored with grace and peace. God's vision for the world is that the whole world would be healed. The world would be put back together. Jesus came to show us how to live in love. Jesus, his own mission was to help heal a broken world. The forgiveness of our sins, but also the repairing of the whole world. And this was the ministry that he invited his disciples into. This is actually for us, our vision of a world restored with grace and peace is based off of a Hebrew phrase called tikkun olam. Maybe some of you have been to tikkun farm in Mount Healthy and you volunteered there at the farm. Well, tikkun farm got its name from this phrase, tikkun olam which is the healing or repair of the world. It comes from ancient teaching from something called the Mishnah. The Mishnah were rabbinical teachings from the third century. But it was this Jewish understanding that every one of us gets to participate in the ongoing repair of what is broken. That the vision of the church is to repair what is broken in the world, to bring healing to the world. Why does Prince of Peace Lutheran Church exist? It exists to help support God's vision of the world restored, healed with God's grace and God's peace. Everything we do at Prince of Peace is in one way or another connected to healing something that is broken, right? That's why we gather people together. When we serve as the church, we are serving not just to do something that's good to do. We're not serving just to do charity or to get our volunteer hours. We're serving because things are broken. Things need healing. And so we as God's people gather together to heal and repair the world. We draw people into community, right? We all know what it's like to feel disconnected and isolated, and we feel that way maybe now more than ever because we're quarantined at home. We can't hang out with our friends like we'd like to. But the church community, the body of Christ, all of us together, well, the church gives us this opportunity to be community, to heal the loneliness and the isolation that so many people feel. When I was growing up, I didn't have a ton of friends during my middle school years, but I had the church. The church was my community, and it helped to heal those things inside my own heart where I felt lonely or I felt like I didn't fit in. The church provided that for me, and it provides that for a lot of people in every stage of life. But the church also, well, it, it gives us hope. It gives us life-changing hope. We have the story of God overcoming the world, overcoming the grave. The story of Jesus is about Christ defeating death and rising from the grave. We have a story of hope. And so the church supports this big vision of God's healing and repair of the world. One of the reasons that I think the church lets people down the most in the world is when it loses sight of this big vision. 
Whenever the local church forgets its purpose for healing and repairing the world, it can do a lot of harm. The church can then become known as a judgmental place or a place where people are hypocrites or they say one thing but do another. Now, nobody is perfect. No church is perfect. No community is perfect. But we have to always stay reminded of why we exist. We exist to support the greater vision of God, of healing, of everything in the world. Not just the healing of our relationship with God through the forgiveness of our sin, but our relationships with one another. We exist for the healing of creation, for caring for God's earth, the creation that God, that God created. We are responsible for taking care of this creation. So the church exists to meet this great need of healing. And we do that by living and loving like Jesus every day. The big picture is the healing of everything broken. The daily action is living like Jesus, loving other people, including other people. Jesus gave sight to the blind man. To the person who couldn't walk, he gave him the ability to walk. Jesus included people who others excluded. What was Jesus doing? Jesus was healing things that were broken. This is why the church exists. The church exists to be a community of people that live as a living sign to the resurrection. We exist to be a witness to the resurrection. We exist to participate with God in the healing and repair of the world. So our identity as people at Prince of Peace should be wrapped up in all of that. Our identity isn't wrapped up in the fact that we like the contemporary service or the traditional service or we're a youth member or we're an adult. All together, the point of it all is to participate in God's vision for the world. That's why we're a part of a community of faith. And I think that's a compelling reason to stay a part of the community of faith because together, we, you and me and so many others, we can make a greater impact in the world when we share our energy and our resources to support God's vision. A world restored with grace and peace. That's the kind of church that we want to become and it's the kind of church we're becoming. We're not perfect. Prince of Peace has a long way to go. But with that as our true north, as our guiding force, it informs how we live and how we love and how we treat one another.